Excellent. Hello, everybody. Good to be here for the fifth time. So for the last uh, five years, I did some presentations myself, but now it's a monumental change in, uh, in our style of delivery. Uh, I, and I have brought uh, two of my team members uh, here to, to talk about the, what we find in the SOC. Uh, in the active threat analytics in, in Krakow. So together with me, we have uh, Oscar, who is our uh, security analyst in the Krakow SOC. And we have Taka, Taka Hiro, who is uh, our security investigator in the Tokyo SOC. And uh, we have one hour, so uh, we prepared something, I think, uh, interesting for you. We, we come from the world of detection. So we, our main, main goal is to find threats as they arrive on the network, on the endpoint, on the infrastructure devices. And more and more, it's a very hard task to accomplish. And, the, you know, we are, we are living in quite a, maybe it's not the right word, but, uh, well, somebody has to make a living and our customers are huge companies. Think, I mean, our smallest customer is uh, larger than the biggest enterprise in Poland. We don't have any customers here. So, so it's hard at this scale to detect threats in a meaningful way and discover stuff and, uh, and produce some value every day. So, so, uh, so we'll show you what we are finding. And of course, we'll show you what we can show you. And it will be several, like 10, 10 cases. Some of them are very, very popular. Some may be less. From the deterministic analysis and from the statistic uh, mm, traffic baselining and anomaly detection wor world. So this is, this is the goal of this presentation. And to, to remind you, uh, I did some presentations in the previous year. Pre years, uh, 2012, I did uh, IPv6 security. Everything is available on SlideShare. Uh, we did about uh, uh, network telemetry, and we actually use that a lot. Flow analytics is more, more and more important. Nobody believes that, you know, uh, log telemetry uh, is enough in today's world. We move, uh, we move into behavior analysis, we move into statistical analysis, a lot of the traffic is encrypted and we cannot do uh, proper decryption, so it's a very, very important topic. Um, then uh, I was talking about networking security treasures, what is being developed two years ago, right now. Um, um, for the detection part, as you know, Cisco owns Snort and we sponsor this project. It's, it's heavily, heavily, you know, supported by us. Right now we have Snort 3.0, Open App ID, many, many, many uh, extensions to the original Snort engine are being developed. So it's quite, quite interesting topic. Uh, and last year we did an introduction to, to, um, to the ATA. So we announced that we are going to, uh, to build a security operations center in Poland. And for the last year, we actually did it. So, so if you look at what happened, uh, this is this is uh, last year. So this is what uh, how it looked like when when I when I came on board. I was the employee number one in Krakow, and basically my uh, my first task was to build the facility. So we did it, and this is how it looks like today. We are based in our enterprise park office. And uh, of course, if you like to visit me, please, please, uh, please, please, uh, please let us know. And um, and this is where we work from 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 Poland. The second hub is in Tokyo, and Taka is representing the Tokyo SOC. And uh, we have the our main hub, the mothership, uh, in RTP, North Carolina, in this uh, famous technology hub. And uh, a little bit about technology. Well, detection is hard. Uh, I think uh, we are a kind of, uh, kind of. Uh, I, I don't want to say losing battle between people who do offensive stuff and the defensive. If you need to do proper detection at the massive scale and uh, do it in a reasonable time frame and identify the threat, mitigate it, and do some IR functions there, it's a hard task to accomplish. Uh, and of course, uh, the resources you need to do a proper detection to store the data, to store the flow telemetry, to do enrichment, to mangle the data, to run analytics on top of that, and to finally record the full packet capture, right? Um, for uh, for uh, 
highest level of investigation to, to find things on the wire, it's extremely expensive because we are moving into the petabyte world and how do you run real-time queries, uh, how do you build such an engine. So you have a data center to protect and you need to build a second one to, to, de to defend and detect. Not everybody can afford it, this is the problem, because you will not spend 50 million on your DC and, and another 50 on, on, on the detection tabs, uh, servers, analytics and staff to do it, because you need have, to have people, right? Uh, um, of course, we, we do more and more automated hunts. Uh, we do more of a machine learning, either uh, either, either um, z zero knowledge or some hypothesis based uh, machine learning. Um, we've acquired actually a company called Cognitive. Maybe you know the guys are sitting in Czech Republic in Prague. There are th those are 50, 50 people who have PhD in statistics and they do nothing more than uh, you know build new models to analyze let's say um, um, distribution of DNS requests and uh, analyzing what kinds of new malware uh, use new kinds of uh, queries. So this is the problem we are facing and it is not an easy problem. This is how, how we do it. We, we build a huge technology stack. It's a full rack of, uh, rack of gear and we ship it to our customer. We connect the tabs. We acquire all kinds of telemetry. We generate our own telemetry. We acquire full packet capture and we run our tool set on that. And we connect via permanent VPN to the gear and do, and do all the tooling, which is pretty, a pretty hard uh, thing and it's not, uh, not uh, let's say, uh, not, um, not cheap. Basically, um, it's uh, quite, uh, quite a feat to accomplish. So this is what we do and uh, now I will pass on to Oscar to, to give you some insight into what we do on the detection side, more of a deterministic detection side and Taka will follow up with, uh, with, uh, mm, with, the, um, with the more anomaly detection side of the house. Oscar, please, you have to keep your mic closed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gavel. Um, hello, everybody, my name is Oscar. Uh, I work for the Cisco for half of a year now. Um, I'm the first security analyst here, so... Uh, <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about uh, something we detect uh, in our SOC. So uh, some few recent cases that we detect and escalate to our customers. Uh, the first one is an exploit kit. I bet most of you know what an exploit kit is, but uh, to, to remind you, uh, it's a kind of um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, it's a kind of a um, um, uh, injection injected code uh, in the website uh, on which uh, the, from from which um, the redirection can uh, can occur, and then uh, the exploit kit can be downloaded, uh, which uh, detect uh, and try to exploit the vulnerability of our. Uh, victims uh, of the victims uh, installed software uh, or the web browser for example so doing that it can download some malicious uh, malware like um, ransomware it's very popular uh, this time uh, so how do we, how do we do it in, in our SOC uh, basically we've got an ATA service so the active threat analytics uh, managed uh, security service ATA uh, is a kit. As we can see, uh, like this on the customer premise, uh, it's a kit uh, that uh, has a lot of different um, security monitoring um, tools uh, and gather uh, and combines a lot of uh, different methods to, to, de to detect uh, threats that occur in the customer um, network. Uh, basically, uh, we have a tab so the sensor uh, installed on the customer network, which gather all the telemetry from the customer network and send it to the uh, to the DCAP, uh, so we can uh, uh, check it later if the, there will be uh, the such need. Uh, so basically, for this case, uh, for neutrino exploit, um, we received um, a source fire event about possible redirection attempt. Uh, as you can see, 
from the external IP on our on customer internal ten dot something. The host name was dot www dot marty something. So that was the page uh, on which victim enter and possible redirection uh, occurred. Checking deeper, ATA analyst uh, investigate uh, what was going on there. So the full packet capture is the best uh, to show us what was going on there. And we can see that um, on this site, uh, www.marty something, uh, after right after um, entering this site was uh, opened another site so Fanny something from the 85 dot IP address uh, that shows us that uh, there was more than only that Marty site the next site is a Seho uh, Sehok ACM site from the 92 dot IP address uh, looking deeper we can see that uh, the file was uh, actually downloaded from the say hook, uh, hook ACM and it was a flash file so possibly it was a malicious file uh, at this point an analyst uh, investigated uh, some part of the case and uh, escalated it to the uh, to the our investigators so he can check whatever the file was uh, malicious or it was or it was not uh, the investigator check it uh, downloaded it, uh, look at the hash of the file, uh, as we can see for the virus total, it shows us that it's some uh, neutrino possible. Um, detonating it in a safe environment, for example in a threat grid, it's our own Cisco uh, sandbox solution for uh, detecting the callbacks from the malware that is uh, detected. Uh, he checks that there was some Call, callbacks uh, for that specific malware and try to find them on the customer network. Uh, he did not find anything, so possibly uh, uh, the malware hasn't been downloaded, but the customer needs to be uh, notified about this. So he created in the customer portal um, an alert about a ticket about uh, this action. As we can see, we are using um, a varies, so a voc vocabulary for um, is a vocabulary for event recording and incident sharing. So it's a, a set of uh, metrics used for incident uh, security incidents analysis to uh, to be in a common, more common language and uh, more widespread. So as we can see, the action was a malware vector was web drive by it was a downloader. It was an external one, and as we can see, uh, that Marty dot site uh, was actually a restaurant site. So the victim probably was checking some restaurants. Uh, the restaurant site was uh, injected with a redirection attempt, probably with an iframe. So, so the redirection occurred. The file was downloaded, but the malware uh, probably something blocked it and uh, customer notified us that checks the system remediated because uh, the customer are doing that remediation part of the um, incident by their own of course we've got a different um, uh, a different team especially helping uh, with the incident is the uh, security incident re response team sorry um, and as we can see, the uh, case was closed uh, as resolved. The confidential data has not been impacted. So the next one is a latent bot malware. Uh, latent bot malware is a kind of a, a backdoor uh, which can spy on the cast uh, on the victims. Um, he can also download the files. Uh, one of the security companies says that from 2013. Uh, it's been in the internet, but hasn't been detected. And in 2015, it uh, began uh, infecting machines and spread through the uh, world, doing some uh, checking and spying on, on its victims. Mm, for this one, we received, uh, ATA analyst received a source file event uh, that says that there are many uh, connected to the uh, Trojan latent bot, 
um, checking deeper, we can see that um, it's a variant output connection. So possibly uh, something was trying to uh, connect to the common server. And as we can see, looking at the ATA analyst looks on the um, full packet capture, we, we check that the hello uh, packets were sent and a lot of them. Uh, really, it was a very noisy uh, callouts to, to some external destinations, which uh, were confined, uh, confirmed by the investigator. And customer was notified about this uh, and advised what, what, sh what he should do uh, about this. Mm, that uh, picture is an uh, alert from the customer portal about this case. The customer checks uh, the infected machine, uh, block the external destination IPs, and because of that it was uh, resolved. Uh, another case is a very popular SQL injection. Uh, OWASP says it's the one, one it's I think in the uh, 2013 um, top 10, it's uh, the first, uh, injections are the first uh, of this list. So basically we received uh, in this case, again, a source fire event which shows us that uh, possible SQL injection attempted. Mm, looking at the IPs and the host name, we can see that uh, for the mm, customer uh, for, for the customer site that occurred, and there are some uh, some more information about the URI that happened. Mm, analyst checked the uh, full packet capture, of course, to see what was really happening there and revealed that uh, for this particular case there was a 200 OK HTTP status, what means that it could possible uh, be um, successful and some data could leak due to this. Uh, he escalated this case to an investigator to check it out more deeper, deeply. Mm, of course, a uh, customer has been notified about this case too because a possible confidential information could be stolen due to that SQL injection attack. As we can see, we've got also various actions here about hacking, uh, SQL, uh, web application, yeah. Mm, what customer do, uh, has done, uh, he blocked the malicious IP uh, applied some restriction to the to the web server uh, in that particular site, which now does not allow to to try and uh, inject any any kind of statements for for the SQL. Uh, also, he checked if the information was stolen. For that case, uh, it was it hasn't been uh, stolen, and no further size has been observed. So, any Further attacks, SQL injection uh, was not uh, was not successful. Possibly 404 uh, HTTP status occur. The next case is a brute force attack, so very popular method to to um, try to enter uh, a valid credential. And SourceFire event was. Uh, for the SQL injection, yeah, uh, yeah, received. And checking it, uh, we can see that there was uh, the alert in the source fire. Then looking, uh, analyst looked into the full packet capture, showing that that particular SQL injection was not successful because it was 404, uh, nothing happened there. Uh, but checking deeper in the pickup of that particular host, uh, analyst found that there was many attempts and uh, and it was a successful uh, attempt to get to the administrator uh, index PHP for the for the backend page uh, of that site looking what was going on there we can see that 
uh, someone was trying to uh, brute force the credentials. So we can see username admin, admin, password Michael, and it was uh, a lot of this. Uh, analyst sent this case to the investigator, which confirmed that such activity is uh, brute force. A uh, customer has been notified about this case uh, and contacted us that uh, previous case was also in, uh, very similar to this one, but uh, it concerns a totally different uh, different side. We have some uh, two sites here um, for the customer and different uh, source IPs um, concerning uh, the brute force. What the customer has do? Uh, he has blocked the malicious IPs and restricted access to the to that uh, administrator uh, backend page. So. Uh, when we see uh, an attempt to enter it, it was not allowed because uh, there was the restrictions applied. Rocky ransomware, um, popular uh, malware uh, this year, and the ransomware uh, we received. Um, actually, um, our analysts are focusing on uh, searching and uh, trying to find an security incidents on various premises. So not only uh, concerning on source fire events of so deterministing and uh, on signature based one, but also um, doing a place. So uh, basically um, making an uh, making an uh, to put it uh, simple uh, scripted um, uh, some scripted search searches for particular and, and maybe interesting uh, cases and activities on the customer network. So for this for that uh, particular case, an email play was uh, set uh, was uh, conducted and searched through um, attachments on the customer uh, on the customer site. Mm, concerning uh, the possible malicious ones and the phishing uh, that could occur. As we can see, one of them uh, uh, was found and it was actually a campaign, to, a phishing campaign to try uh, to mm, uh, say to customer to open the, the, the attachment and Probably it will be. It, it is very malicious, and it will uh, infect the machine of the customer. So as we can see, the subject uh, of this mail was a, a confirmation of the loan in the attachment, and in the content, uh, the bank says that it's a confirmation letter that we that uh, he should review it. Just opening the the attachment. As we can see, the attachment has a randomized uh, name, so it's possible that it was not a human mate, because there are, uh, there are algorithms to, to do just that and name uh, the attachments to avoid uh, detecting, but by, uh, for example, uh, some very simple antivirus protection. Uh, analyst checks the first the hash of the file looking if it had been seen previously and it occurred that it has been because uh, virus total for example says that it's uh, some kind of downloader possible locky so a ransomware in this case uh, analysts uh, investigated it at this point and to check it more deeply so the callouts need to be revealed he escalated it to uh, investigator an investigator detonated uh, in a safe sandbox environment, uh, for example, a thread grid, so our own sandbox solution. And the callouts was, uh, were revealed. So we see that some HTTP traffic was uh, trying, uh, being made to some 91 dot something uh, sites, 158 and 185. Yeah. Uh, Investigator checks uh, the the premises and the network, the full pickup uh, of the customer looking for that specific IPs. Uh, if he if he uh, 
if it uh, will be there, so that would mean that uh, actually the infection occurred. So the malware was opened, the attachment was opened, uh, it contacted the uh, C2 server, and possible the infection occurred. But in this case, uh, there was no connection to that IPs, and basically uh, the case at this point was closed, but the callouts that were made um, has been recorded for future purposes. For example, a hand, on which uh, maybe um, Taka will tell you more uh, about uh, later. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's everything from me. Uh, now I will uh, give my uh, microphone to Taka, so Taka, please. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Taka from Tokyo SOC. Uh, as Gabriel mentioned, uh, um, th th we ATA services have three SOCs uh, all, over the, all over the world, uh, currently, and uh, Krakow, and um, RTP in the US, and also in Tokyo. Um, our SOC is uh, actually um, not very um, gorgeous like that, uh, where uh, with a dragon. But uh, some people are working uh, working on in Tokyo SOC and um, doing um, um, security monitoring and analysis uh, for mainly Japanese customers, but also uh, uh, other uh, other countries' customers. And um, today, uh, I would like to um, introduce some cases. Um, which is um, f about looking for anomaly. Because um, Oscar ca cases are uh, um, mainly uh, signature-based um, detection and um, and o or also a deterministic uh, deterministic uh, detection. Um, it is actually uh, very good to use and reliable because uh, we are already uh, known these, thre these threats. But, um, yeah, but the negative, negative point of a uh, signature-based detection is uh, that uh, it can detect only known threats. It, it is, of course. So, um, ATA is trying to uh, also catch uh, unknown threads, uh, which is uh, not covered with uh, any signatures. So um, it is um, conducting um, several um, detection mechanisms to look for anomalies, which may or may not have security breaches, actually. But um, maybe there is, um, if there would be any uh, anomalies found in a customer environment, Probably it is uh, very good to know for customers in some cases. And um, foreign cases are uh, ones which were actually not um, security breaches, but um, they would uh, hopefully highlight uh, some of our approaches to um, detect unknown threats. So I would like to um, show the first case, uh, which is traffic-based monitoring. Uh, tra sorry, traffic baseline monitoring. With the same picture. Um, <coughs> we, are in just, uh, we are taking uh, customer traffic into the, the, uh, our kit. And uh, there is a uh, engine which is called uh, metadata extraction. And uh, that engine uh, is, uh, as named, extracting uh, metadata, <laughs> like uh, URI of HTTP or uh, or NetFlow um, flow information from NetFlow, like that. Um, so, of course, PCAP uh, has uh, the most detailed information, but um, for uh, some purposes, uh, metadata would be uh, more better, um, more better utilized, like um, aut automatically automatically um, searching something or calculating something. And this case, um, 
metadata extraction engine uh, generates um, flow information and using um, using NetFlow uh, making or us to uh, make, making us to use uh, these flow informations. And uh, there is a uh, advanced analytics um, advanced analytics uh, engine. Um, it is uh, calculating um, some uh, calculating some parameters on this uh, extracted flow information, and it um, alerted an anomaly on a particular server flow, like that. Um, I don't guess. Um, just uh, just seeing, uh, showing uh, this information uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't make any sense. But uh, I would um, I will explain uh, the meaning uh, later a little bit. But um, when we uh, know this a lot, oh, there is a very high number of uh, anomaly index, so uh, we uh, we would uh, check this particular uh, server's flow. And looking at this, um, there was, uh, there looked like, uh, looked like it. So at the end of July to uh, the uh, early of, of August, there is a apparent changes, change in trend. Um, there is a great increase, increase in in traffic, uh, traffic bytes information, and this is actually a traffic from a database, uh, sorry, database server uh, to a particular server, and um, a particular um, protocol. So it is actual actual uh, database communication with a particular server. And it uh, suddenly increased very much. Mm, it's interesting. <coughs> and um, we conducted um, several investigations, including uh, looking at syslog messages uh, ingested from customer environment, uh, like that. But um, honestly, uh, we couldn't find uh, any suspicious information. But <coughs> Uh, we notified uh, this event to customer so that uh, customer um, can confirm if it is um, actually uh, unexpected event or not. And the customer uh, confirmed it was benign. And um, this traffic change was uh, due, due to a special operation uh, to transfer huge data, uh, which was intentionally done by database administrators. But um, there is a SOC team, uh, customer SOC team, uh, who we are facing too. Uh, they were not um, aware of that. So um, because of uh, this uh, notification, um, the SOC team um, could know uh, about their net network uh, a little bit better. <laughs> okay. um, some details uh, I, I, would, uh, I would like to explain. So um, that customer environment is uh, considered relatively uh, static. So uh, there is uh, a lot of kind of, um, um, a lot of kind of uh, environments are so if it is a office network, maybe uh, this kind of, um, oh, there, there is a, a traffic spike, um, maybe it is not a problem. But um, at that, that customer, um, the, uh, is, that, that customer's environment is, um, should be uh, pretty stiff. And um, as, as you, uh, so, um, before the increase of, of uh, end of July, there is uh, the, that communication was uh, has, were, uh, relatively low keeping. 
And, uh, and one more thing is, uh, there, uh, there are, uh, several servers, which is called as, uh, critical assets, uh, the, or, uh, has been defined, uh, which should be cautiously monitored. <coughs> and, um, the technique, how we are applying is, um, a little bit here. Uh, so it utilizes a very simple stati statistical method. Um, actually, um, maybe, uh, which can be found in, in the very early pages of the, Textbooks, <laughs> uh, which calculates and updates uh, mean and variance value of uh, each monitored float. So per server, per protocol, per uh, communication peer, and um, for for each of uh, monitored floats, um, anomaly index is calculated based on an expectation that the values are distributed on standard distribution or Gaussian distribution, which is actually never. <clears throat> but sometimes it, it may be useful. In this model, uh, that reported anomaly index, uh, uh, which was uh, 149, indicates, indicates that the probability of that, that event is below Tens or power minus sixteenth, it's um, almost impossible. Yep. I I would like to show about um, another case about DNS tunneling. Um, first, I I would like to um. um tell the result. Um, this was actually happened, but th this was uh, customer's internal pen testing. Cus uh, some customers uh, do uh, internal pen testing without not notifying to, to us, uh, because uh, one purpose is, of course, uh, to see uh, their, uh, their security uh, environment. Uh, in perspective of, of security, but um, the other um, the another one is actually to test us <laughs> if uh, we we can detect that activities. Uh, this case was uh, th this one, <laughs> the stoning. Okay, so. <clears throat> The flow is, flow is, uh, similar to the former one. So, um, there, there is a, traf uh, there is, uh, traffic ingested to our kit and met metadata extraction engine is, uh, extracting metadata for DNS queries too. And responses. And advanced analytics engine, um, is looking for um, these uh, DNS queries and raised an alert like like that. It is small and, and uh, probably um, hard to see, but um, this is the query string and the next next uh, column row next row. So pretty long the string and uh, which apparently um, looks uh, abnormal. And um, this uh, type, of, um, this kind of uh, alert are, are raised um, a lot. So at this point, um, we have already know uh, there is uh, there is something uh, anomalous is happening. Yeah, actually, the query were uh, apparently consistent consistent with the storing activities. Um, there is some some tools to um, utilize it, uh, like DNS cat. <clears throat> and so it should be reported to customer. But um, usually, um, we see the traffic uh, mainly in internet traffic. So 
um, the querier is actually um, for almost cases, as a query is uh, a cache server, and cache, cache server is um, uh, transferring data to the internet uh, on behalf of the actual client. This is uh, a major problem when um, you want to um, do uh, correction at, at the client. <coughs> So uh, there is um, more uh, investigation um, has been done, uh, which is uh, looking at syslog messages. So um, at, at that customer, uh, customer is sending uh, also DNS servers logs, which is for uh, made queries. So uh, in that log, um, we can see the client IP address and the query itself and the type, query type or, and also um, response. So a client IP address uh, has been determined. So this exact, uh, this exact client is uh, performing um, this DNS tunneling activity. And um, this was reported to customers as, as a uh, incident report. <clears throat> Honestly, uh, customer had notified to ATA um, that they were they were going to perform some penetration testing someday. Um, so ATA queried. Uh, uh, so we queried if it was a it was a test or not. If it is not t test or it is very severe uh, security incidents. And the customer confirmed that uh, this was actually uh, actual uh, internal uh, penetration test performed by them. So um, uh, we uh, we, fe uh, we felt a uh, very uh, <laughs> comfort. <laughs> okay, customer tested us, and uh, we detected it. Uh, uh, yes, good job. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, show some background about DNS tunneling. Um, some reports or, or uh, blog, blog, um, blogs uh, states that uh, DNS tunneling is uh, considered one of the methods which we need to be most cautious because it, it is, um, DNS is um, per permitted everywhere and uh, DNS tunneling is very easy to utilize. Um, due to the purpose, but due to the purpose of the method uh, to bring data on DNS queries and responses, um, the ex execution would likely produce uh, much longer parameters than usual. Um, this is a um, inf some information from uh, our Taros block. Uh, you can see this information from uh, on this URL, but. Um, here is a distribution of subdomain lengths. Um, so, like 50 or um, uh, sorry, uh, 40 or 50, 50 subdomain lengths are all already uh, anomalous. And DNS tunneling queries may look like this. Mm, it is um, it is very different from usual queries. So, um, based on that um, we um, um, taking, uh, we took our eyes on the length of DNS queries and it detected uh, DNS tunneling activities. But uh, there would be uh, several uh, cons considerations um, because um, several services generates a very long name, actually including our uh, sender base services. So uh, in case of um, um, looking up uh, domain reputation, uh, this uh, produces a very long um, DNS query, which is uh, actually a text query. And also, um, you may know that uh, Amazon AWS 
the host name is uh, originally very long. So this, these kind of um, names uh, should be um, should have been already uh, eliminated be before uh, before do conducting these anal analytics. And also um, internal names in customer environment. It, this is um, also um, sometimes very long. So when implementing the, these kind of uh, methods, uh, looking looking for anomalies, uh, it is very important. I would say it is very important to maintain a environment-specific tuning to reduce false positives. If uh, we we wouldn't uh, do any any tuning like this. Uh, may, uh, maybe um, that uh, that analytics engine uh, we would report uh, many of our sender base uh, activities, um, which I which we don't want to uh, investigate it because we we know that we our services. Okay. Um. This is all uh, about uh, my part, so uh, I would, I'd like to pass on uh, pass the ball to Gabriel again. Thank you, Taka. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, you saw some of the things that we detect in our SOC. Detection is hard, exploitation is uh, easier. This is the, the main message and the main topic, and there is a huge disproportion in in what we what you have to do to to uh, to exploit some vulnerability or to get into the system and uh, and uh, between what you have to do to detect and uh, we are on the detection side so so i hope it was useful for you i hope it uh, you know was valuable uh, of course it's a never ending story we have new threats and we need to adapt and um, and we uh, we apply <coughs> new innovative approaches to do it so just to just to summarize in order to build a sock because many many people come to us and say okay i will build a sock tomorrow no you will not because uh, to build a sock you need to have if, if it's a real sock you need to have 24 by 7. if not it's just a security department and you go you go on the weekend to to home and enjoy the weekend right but if it's a sock it's an operations environment you have to do it 24 by 7. So you need at least 15 people, 15 analysts. And then you have to have investigators, you have to have people who know how tools uh, work and how, how to build them and how to tune them and how to build new custom tools and how to maybe uh, buy some commercial product and introduce it into your detection environment and modify and, and do some statistical analysis. And this is totally, totally different kind of science. It's, it's data science, so this is, uh, not, not everybody can afford a, sci a data scientist. It's, it's actually quite a nice story. You know, an engineer in Silicon Valley earns, I don't know, $100,000 plus, and a data scientist earn 300000 So how many of them can you f hire? That's the question. All right, so this is the analytics part. Uh, so if you have three, it's one million per year, dollars. Uh, uh, then you have to have security intelligence. You have to have feeds, threat intelligence. Security intelligence is data. Threat intelligence is contextualized data that is relevant for my environment based on what resources I have, what uh, workloads I have, what applications, and what kind of business I am in. This is, this is this sense of relevancy. This is where the threat intelligence comes into play. And then you have to have a technology, and a lot of that. And this is how we how we how we do it. And I hope uh, those those uh, those uh, examples were quite interesting. So just just uh, just uh, just to summarize, uh, we are growing our glorious ATA SOC, and we are hiring, and we are hiring in all the all the categories you can you can imagine, from the more entry level jobs. So. This is a kind of entry-level job, IntelliShield analyst, technical writer, if you are starting a cybersecurity career. And you know, Cisco is producing quite a lot of devices, right? There are millions of Cisco routers, switches, uh, firewalls, IPSs, IP phones, 
and they have some vulnerabilities because humans uh, write the code and it is prone to error, right? So we have the vulnerabilities in our own products and in third party products and of course we have millions of companies using those and we have to very precisely, transparently, ethically produce information if we find a vulnerability. And this is, we, we call it IntelliShield or vulnerability bulletins. If you go to cisco.com slash security, you have long vulner vulnerability lists in, you know, Apache in, you know, uh, open source um, software in Cisco software and in other Microsoft software. And we produce it constantly to give exact information. What is it? What is the impact? Of course, the, CV the CVSS approach and what you can do, what you have to do, what are the interim releases or patches, bug fixes or uh, versions of software uh, that fix this problem, right? So writing it for uh, as a beginning for the cyber security career, I think it's great because after half a year of writing this stuff and researching this information in many sources, you know exactly what is going on on the market. What are the current vulnerabilities this week? It's a very interesting and uh, uh, and uh, and valuable knowledge. So this is this is uh, this is kind of uh, kind of uh, entry. And then we have a, a bring them on approach, where uh, it's a job job of threat analyst, where you are using various detection tools and techniques. We are showing you the source file, but we are not religious about the the tools that we use. We use a lot of free software, we use commercial tools, we, we use of course Cisco source fire detection technology and those are focused on that a bit. But if we think that there, are, there is some other commercial product on the market that does the job, we just buy it. <laughs> that's, that's the end of the story. The decision is very simple. You, you, you know, on, I, I recently met, uh, met, uh, met a guy who who actually uh, is in venture capital uh, business and he's all, always sitting in the Silicon Valley and he told me just, it was just, uh, you know, quite interesting that he just sold open DNS to Cisco for half a billion dollars. And of course he said, you know, there are 600 cybersecurity companies, startups. You will not ever be able to invent everything yourself. This is why such events are important, like besides sharing the knowledge. And of course, there are a lot of genius people that are just developing the code or hardware or both, or, or some ideas. And uh, and of course, we try to use it as much as we can for our own advantage and to protect uh, uh, the, the companies we work we work uh, with, right? And and there is the the sec info security investigator role where, uh, where uh, you know all of that and add on top some data science knowledge, working on big data sets, writing new custom tools and adjusting methodologies to a specific environment. This is, this is investigator job. It's normally, it's normally uh, you have spent several years in, in, this, uh, in, 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 in the detection uh, environment in the SOC and uh, you are able, you have your own ideas how to enhance. Uh, our tool set and, and uh, techniques. And we have other roles. We have engineers, security engineers, the, the newest CCIE security uh, in Poland. Uh, Łukasz Sadowski has passed his exam in Brussels last week on, on Monday, right? So, so we, have, uh, we have also engineering, uh, we ha uh, engineering team and talent because apart from all of that that we mentioned, we are managing all the security devices. I mean, all. The recent, our last customer from, from last week, he told us, hey guys, I don't have any Cisco device, but I, give, I will give you uh, my fire eye boxes because I know that you will do it right, Cisco. Thank you, please accept it. And we said, okay, we do it, right? So we are not religious about technology. We do all the major, uh, uh, all the major vendors as well. And there is also a role of sec info security investigations manager. It's a role that is custom, more customer facing. It's, uh, it means that you are actually sustaining the relationship for uh, for uh, let's say three years that we have or more uh, for in in the contract and and you did all of this stuff for the last ten years and you have an opinion on on that and you are able to you know to communicate effectively and uh, and uh, make and generate uh, and generate um, relevant information and answer questions in the real time. 
because of course uh, we detect stuff, but also uh, the companies we work with are asking us questions. Hey guys, we, s we saw that in our Splunk or we saw that in our very special detection system that you don't have access to Cisco. And uh, can you tell us, maybe did you see something? And we say, okay, we'll check it for you and we will do a custom investigation based on what, what, what we get, right? So it's a mutual communication. It's not, it's not plug, a, plug and play approach. So, so, um, so that's it. Thank you so very much. Uh, we really appreciate that we could come here and share this with you. We'll be here for the next 30 minutes with Taka, then I need to drive him to the airport. He's flying, I believe, to China for some penetration testing training. And Oscar will be here till, uh, till the end, till 6 p.m. So, so uh, thank you so very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.